Hello, and welcome to MCA Services, and our first video all about mercury porosimetry. Mercury porosimetry is an analytical technique that provides the user with information on porosity. It covers pore sizes, pore volumes, and pore areas within a solid sample. With some additional steps to the analysis, the technique can also be used to calculate bulk density, skeletal density, and porosity. And it can even be extended to measure permeability, pore tortuosity, and sample compressibility. In this video, we're going to try and give you a quick description of the technique and the information that can be gained from it. In following videos, we will show how the technique is used to undertake a porosimetry analysis of a sample, all the way through from loading the sample into sample holders to the analysis itself. Virtually any solid material can be analysed by this technique, whether it's a powder, in granular form, or larger solid pieces. The size and volume of pores in a sample are factors which determine the physical characteristics of a material. And they often have quite profound effects on the performance. Over the years, and we've been doing these analyses for decades now, we've analysed a huge variety of samples from an incredibly diverse range of industries. Just a few types of sample are shown on screen now. Catalysts, pharmaceuticals, geological samples, foodstuffs, building materials, the list goes on and on. Pore sizes can extend over several orders of magnitude, ranging from millimetres down to nanometres. There's no one single technique that can cover this complete range, and so a combination of techniques has to be used. Pore sizes are quite commonly classified as micropores, they're smaller than 2 nanometres in diameter, mesopores, between 2 and 50 nanometres in diameter, and macropores, they're larger than 50 nanometres in diameter. Gas adsorption is a complementary technique to this, and it's used to characterise the very smallest pores within the micropore range and extending into the mesopore range. At MCA Services, we use the latest micromeritics instrument, an Autopore 5, for all of our mercury porosimetry work. This provides information on a range of pore sizes from 30 nanometers all the way up to those in excess of 400 micrometers, or 0.4 millimeters. Mercury porosimetry works because mercury is a non-wetting liquid. It has a contact angle of greater than 90 degrees, as can be seen on the photo on the right-hand side. So in order for mercury to intrude into a pore, we must apply pressure. And as this applied pressure increases, mercury is forced into smaller and smaller pores. The applied pressure required to intrude mercury into a pore is inversely proportional to the size of the pore. By increasing the applied pressure in appropriate increments, we can measure the volume of mercury intruded into a sample at a range of pressures. And from that, we can generate an intrusion curve of pore size against intrusion pressure. The intrusion pressure against volume data is converted to corresponding pore sizes by applying Washburn's equation. That's shown in a convenient form here, where D is the pore diameter in microns, gamma is the surface tension of mercury, theta is the contact angle of mercury, and P is the applied pressure in PSIA. Knowing the contact angle and the surface tension of mercury means that by precisely controlling and measuring the applied pressure, the corresponding pore sizes can be calculated. A sample is weighed and then loaded into a penetrometer for analysis. The penetrometer is made of glass. It has a cylindrical glass sample holder at one end, which we also call the bulb, and that's sealed with a metal cap once the sample has been loaded. The other end of the cylinder extends into a glass stem, and this is a very precisely known volume, and it's coated with a metallic film. At the start of analysis, the penetrometer is evacuated, usually to below 50 microns mercury pressure, and the penetrometer is then backfilled with mercury. So at the start of analysis, the sample is enveloped with mercury, the bulb is full of mercury, and the stem is also filled with mercury. 
The volume of mercury held in the stem is essentially a reservoir which is used for intrusion into pores within the sample. As the applied pressure is increased to a point where mercury becomes intruded into pores, mercury will move along the stem. And it's this movement of mercury along the stem that is measured by changes in electrical capacitance. To intrude into pores of 0.003 microns, which is also 3 nanometers, the smallest pores measured by this instrument, a pressure of 60,000 psia must be generated and applied. And that's just over 4,000 atmospheres. The penetrometer stem holds a finite volume of mercury, and if the pore volume of the sample exceeds this, all of the mercury held within the stem will be used before the end of the analysis. So we have to take care when selecting the optimum sample quality and penetrometer to use for an analysis. Now this is helped with a large selection of penetrometer types being available, and they differ in the volume of the stem, the volume of the sample bulb, and also whether they're designed for use with solids or powder samples. One of the most common questions we were asked is, does the mercury under pressure crush the sample? The majority of materials have a sufficient pore volume of open pores within the sample. That means pores that are open to the exterior of the sample. And in this case, the sample does not become crushed. The reason is that pressure is increased incrementally up to 60,000 PSIA, and time is allowed at each pressure for any mercury intrusion into the sample to equilibrate. The analysis is therefore effectively isostatic. The same pressure acts inwards towards the sample as acts outwards from the sample. And it's exactly the same reason why the glass penetrometer doesn't break during analysis. The photos here show some instant coffee granules. They're quite a delicate sample and they can be crushed between the fingers. Even after being subjected to intrusion up to 60,000 PSIA, the granules remain intact there is a very slight discoloration of the samples after analysis, and that's due to mercury being retained within some of the smaller pores. At the end of the analysis, we get the cumulative intrusion curve. This is pore size diameter in microns against cumulative intrusion volume, or pore volume. This shows two essentially flat regions where there's no mercury intrusion into pores, but the region between around about 2.5 microns down to 0.5 microns is near vertical. And this is where mercury is being intruded into pores. An alternative presentation is perhaps a little easier to understand. And this is the log differential intrusion against pore size. This quite clearly shows that the pores within this sample range from 1.6 microns down to 0.5 microns and centered at around about 1.3 microns. From this data, we can also get some more values and these are shown here in a summary report. It starts with the total intrusion volume or pore volume of 0.51 milliliters per gram. We have a few different calculations for pore sizes, both by area and by volume. And we also have a pore area. That's the area of the pore walls, just over two square meters per gram. This is based on a model of cylindrical pore geometry. We've also calculated bulk density, skeletal density, and volume porosity. With the precise volume calibration of the empty penetrometer, and by weighing the assembled penetrometer containing the sample, both with and without mercury, it's possible to calculate the displacement volume of the sample. Knowing this, as well as its mass, means that the density of the sample can be calculated. The sample porosity, expressed as a percentage of total sample volume, can also be calculated from these figures, and they're very often complementary to pore size and pore volume data, as they also determine the physical properties and performance characteristics of the material being analysed. Density is quite straightforward to calculate. It's just mass divided by volume. And mass is easy to determine. But the choice and measurement of volume is slightly different. 
Samples are quite often irregular in shape, meaning that volume isn't quite so easy to calculate. It's quite often measured by displacement. That's the displacement volume of another medium by the sample itself. But for a porous sample, we must choose whether to include or exclude the volume of pores. And this provides two really quite different density values. Bulk density, also called envelope density, is calculated by including the volume of all pores within a sample. It's conveniently undertaken by mercury porosimetry and can be applied to single solid pieces of sample as well as powders and granules. For powder and granular samples, it may be possible to calculate a range of bulk density values at different characteristic points of the mercury intrusion curve. That's shown by the two blue lines on the plot on the right-hand side of the screen. Skeletal density is calculated by excluding the volume of all open pores within the sample that are intruded with mercury in this case pores that are larger than 0.003 microns diameter. For a porous sample, this density value is closer to the absolute density of the material. Absolute density, sometimes called the true density, is calculated by excluding all open pores from the volume function of the calculation, and that's usually undertaken by an alternative displacement technique, for example helium pycnometry. Once the ultimate intrusion pressure has been reached, 60,000 PSIA in this case, it's also possible to record the extrusion of mercury from the sample. And this is undertaken by controlling the reduction of pressure back to atmospheric through a series of pre-selected decrements. Comparing intrusion and extrusion curves, and most notably the extent of hysteresis between them, can provide valuable information regarding the geometry of pores and how restrictive a network of pores within the sample may be. Well, thank you for viewing our introduction to mercury porosimetry. We're also going to be uploading a couple of extra videos. The first one will show how we select a penetrometer and how we load the sample into it. And following that, we will also upload a video showing how the analysis on the autopore is actually undertaken.